section one. You will hear two people organizing a going away party for a mutual friend. First, you have some time to look at questions one to four. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to four. Hey Bruce, looks like we got some planning to do for Albert's going away party, right? There are certainly some things we have to talk about now. Yeah, that's better than doing everything at the last minute. Okay, so I can write some notes as we talk. Sure thing. So, when should we have the party? Hmm. He goes to Thailand on the twenty-sixth of August. Okay. Let's have it on the twenty-fourth then. Yes. Let me see. That's a Friday. That'd be perfect. Now, where should we have it? At a bar or a club? You know, I think he would like something really intimate. Nothing too loud. A restaurant would be good. Maybe the Apple Tree Grill. Great place. Sounds good. Okay. Now we have to think about who to invite. Well, his best friend from college. Sure. And his cousins, right? Oh yes, his co-workers. Yeah, okay, his co-workers and his boss. Any other people? How about his yoga classmates? Hmm, he does love yoga, but that might be too many people. I suppose so. I can email and text message the invitations. When should I send them? We should send them out soon, but not too early. How about the sixteenth of August then? Well, why not give it a few more days? The thirteenth? All right, I think that's a good time too. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions five to ten. Now listen and answer questions five to ten. Okay, now we have to think of a gift. Should we all get one? No, I was thinking we could all give money for the party and the gift. You know, something really nice. Yeah, that'd be better than getting him little things individually. I can ask for the money. Thanks for doing that. How much should we ask for? I think we should ask for maybe fifteen dollars each. Is that too much? No, not at all. He's going away for two years. That would give us about one hundred and fifty dollars. That's a good amount. Yeah, well, I'm thinking we could get him something practical. Yes, especially since he's going abroad. Something he could use. Something that's also portable. We could get him an article of clothing, perhaps, or maybe even a pair of shoes. Hmm. Shoes are nice, but they might wear out easily, especially where he's going. Maybe a book light. A what? Yeah, he loves to read, and a book light would be very convenient when he travels. Okay, that's one good gift idea. Did you write that down? Yep. Now we need to think about reservations at the restaurant. Well, we should get their big banquet room, yeah. Yes, definitely. Should we ask the restaurant to prepare a buffet? Isn't that expensive? No, I don't think it is. A buffet dinner sounds cheaper than everyone ordering individual meals. Definitely. How about drinks? They can buy drinks themselves or bring their own. Okay. Yeah, it would cost too much if we bought drinks ourselves. Certainly. We have to ask someone to bring an MP3 player. The restaurant has speakers, and we can hook it up for music. Sounds good. Actually, there is one more thing that I thought we should do since Albert is leaving for such a long time. What were you thinking of? Maybe we could have a slideshow of all the fun times we've had. Hmm. That'll take a little bit of work, but I think it's a great idea. Actually, in the invitation, can you ask for some photos people have of him? Yeah, definitely. I can scan them, or people can send me digital photos they have. All right. I'll tell them when I send out the invitations. Then I can make a little presentation. Ha! <laughs> I can't wait to see his reaction. Yeah, especially that one picture where. That is the end of section one.
You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2. Section 2. You will hear a webcast on the Freeman Travel Services website. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen to the first part of the webcast and answer questions 11 to 16. Welcome to the Fremen Travel Services website. We appreciate your visit. Please listen to this introductory webcast for general information. You can click another link at any time. For webcasts in other languages, like Spanish or German, please click on the links above the media player. From this website, you can access audio information on our latest travel offers. If you have already made a reservation with us previously and would like to check on its status, please click on the reservations link in the upper right hand corner of the page. We also have information regarding our new line of Extreme Tour packages. Thank you for choosing Freeman Travel Services as your guide. This webcast will explain our recently developed line of Extreme Tour packages. These special vacations were made for those with adventure in mind. We have already gotten awards from a highly regarded travel agency association for these tours. Here at Freeman, we want to help you create memories that last a lifetime. These are not your everyday ordinary tour packages. On these excursions, you will have the chance to challenge yourself and grow as a person. How many other travel agencies can claim to help you do that? We currently offer extreme tours on three different continents. In South America, we have programs in Brazil, Peru, and Argentina. In Southeast Asia, you can go to Thailand or Vietnam. Finally, we just recently started selling spaces for tours in Australia. We also plan to offer more locations around the world in the coming year. Please check this website for future updates. There are highly trained people guiding you on every one of our tours. For those independent travelers, don't worry, there are plenty of opportunities available to explore on your own. Whenever you purchase one of our tour packages, we do our best to accommodate you. Round-trip airfare to your destination is included, along with any accommodation and transportation needed in that country. We don't include food or any sort of entertainment in the price. We know that our customers often want to discover these things by themselves. Before you hear the rest of the webcast, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. Following is a brief summary of some of the tours that we offer. Peru is home to an ancient civilization. The Andes Mountains provide stunning views to enjoy when you go hiking and camping on our five-day tour package. There will also be an opportunity to see ancient ruins and also to go whitewater rafting. The people in Peru are very friendly, and you will not forget their generosity and warm hearts. Another extreme tour package we have is in Thailand. 
They have a very unique culture there, and even our seven-day vacation there might not be enough to see everything. The tour includes an overnight stay on a riverboat, parasailing, and a visit to one of Thailand's biggest cities, Chiang Mai. We also have an excursion to an elephant ranch that you do not want to miss. Finally, we have something really special for you in our newest vacation package in Australia. We have over two weeks of activities, that is 14 days, which take you from the Gold Coast to the Outback and to some of the continent's most exciting places. Go on this tour if you want to scuba dive with thousands of tropical fish at the Great Barrier Reef. See the awesome beauty of Australia's deserts and party in some of the best clubs and bars in the country. Thank you for considering Freeman Tours. I invite you to look at the comment board on this website. There you can read the testimonials of all the people who have gone on our tours. That is the end of Section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 3. Section 3. You will hear Tom and Danny, two students, talking with their professor about the assignment. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Professor Tomlinson, may Annie and I please quickly ask you a few questions about the reflective journal assignment? It's just that we're a bit confused as to what you want us to include and discuss. Yes, of course. What are you having trouble with? Well, everything really. To start with, what should be included first in the reflective journal? Perhaps suggestions from others? No, no. Firstly, you should include the study goals you set yourself at the beginning of the module. This section should have been discussed in some detail towards the beginning of the course by Professor May. You should be able to find her suggestions on the slides she has provided the class online. OK, thank you, Professor. Could I also trouble you to take a brief look at my bibliography and footnotes? I feel like they're missing something. Most of our friends' bibliographies are longer. Well, looking at this, Annie, I can see that you have used a wide range of resources, which shows that you have made effective use of communication technology. As far as I can tell, you need not make any changes to this although you might want to double-check that your referencing complies with the Harvard Referencing Style regulations. Oh, I'm very surprised you've said that. Thank you. Now I can set my mind at ease. Tom, you said you wanted to ask the professor about the achievement section. Ah, oh, yes, professor. In the assignment guidelines, we are asked to introduce and elaborate on our biggest achievement in the past, saying which skills we learned in the process and how these skills can be transferred to various different future careers. The only problem is that I don't know what my greatest achievement actually is. I've only ever worked as a waiter in a hotel restaurant during the summer holidays from university. If you worked as a waiter in a hotel restaurant, you're bound to have worked with other waiters as part of a team. Would you say that during your time as a waiter, you developed any leadership skills? Yes, well, I suppose I was asked to become the team leader of the food and beverage department, but that's hardly an achievement. You might not think so, but if you write that you were offered the position of the team leader, it shows a lot more about your character. 
for example, that you're charismatic and work well in a high-pressure situation. I never would have thought to write that down. Thank you. I guess I should start listening to others more often. Annie, do you have any more questions, or are you ready to go back to the library? Yeah, I think I've got everything I need. Thank you very much, Professor Tomlinson. That was really helpful. I'm actually starting to look forward to writing this now, and it should be a really useful exercise to prepare us for writing CVs and applying for jobs. It's shocking how bad I am at identifying my strengths and weaknesses. Professor Tomlinson has shown me that I definitely need to start displaying some self-awareness. Yeah, Tom, you really do. You're always so modest. Modesty is great until it comes to applying for jobs. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions twenty-seven to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-seven to thirty. Oh no! I forgot to ask the professor about the section on identifying the skills gained through different activities. Do you remember when it asks you, for example, whether writing an essay develops your study skills or your independent learning, and so on? Oh goodness! We really should have asked him that. I've been having trouble with it too. It just seems like such a pointless task. What do you reckon the answers are? Hmm. I think writing an essay might be a way of identifying and resolving a problem, because you have to state the problem in the introduction and then solve it. I'm not so sure about taking exams. I thought they were supposed to develop lots of different skill sets. If I really had to choose, I'd say that taking exams enables you to become more confident in yourself. Do you agree? Maybe. I really don't know either. What do you think about the last two, making class notes and presentation notes? Oh, it's so difficult. I think making class notes has to be a way of becoming a more independent learner, because you yourself decide what the important information is. And learn it. That reminds me, I find taking presentation notes is a disaster. The professors speak much too quickly, and I write much too slowly. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section four. You will hear part of a lecture about architecture. You have thirty seconds to look at questions thirty-one to thirty-six. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to thirty-six. During today's seminar, we will be looking at English Gothic architecture and its origins with a specific case study of Wells Cathedral in England. The Gothic style was initially brought over to England from France. 
This was at a period of time in which England was ruled from France by the Normans, starting with William the Conqueror, who first defeated the English army at the Battle of Hastings on October 14, 1066. After 1072, when some smaller rebellions in northern England had been defeated, the Normans gained complete control of the English monarchy, which they controlled until 1154. The peace that ensued in England had a large impact on many aspects of daily life. Thousands of French words entered the English language for the first time, such as beef, fruit, city and hour. French ideas and styles, like Gothic, also began to flow across the Channel to England too, examples of which can still be seen in the architecture of many listed buildings. A listed building is one that is protected from alteration or demolition because of its historical or stylistic importance. One such building is Wells Cathedral. Construction on Wells Cathedral began in 1175 at a time when Gothic architecture as a style was in its infancy. As a result, it is one of the first entirely Gothic buildings ever constructed. From the first design to the date it was completed in 1490, Gothic architecture flourished in England. Therefore, later additions to the building were still influenced by this Gothic style, rather than by later architectural styles such as Tudor architecture. Older cathedrals in England would have initially been influenced by Romanesque architecture, alternatively known as Norman architecture in England. As the former name suggests, Romanesque was a building style based on the skills passed on to various areas of Europe by the Romans. When the Western Roman Empire collapsed in the 5th century, these methods were retained by Rome's former colonies and developed further. One such Roman gift to the Romanesque architects was the round arch, also known as the true arch. The Romans perfected this style by using wedge-shaped stones called voussoirs, which created pressure that held the structure together at the top. Cathedrals in England, such as the ones in Ely and Canterbury, were started before the arrival of Gothic architecture. Even though parts of those two cathedrals, which were constructed later, are in the Gothic style, other sections predating the arrival of Gothic architecture are Romanesque. The result is known as eclectic, because the building is constructed using more than one style. All of these cathedrals belong to a group known as the Medieval Cathedrals of England. There are 26 different buildings that belong to this group in total, all of which were constructed or added to during a 500-year period from 1040 to 1540. Now you have some time to look at questions 37 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 37 to 40. The transition from Romanesque to Gothic began in 1144 at the Abbey Church of Saint-Denis on the edge of Paris. It was here that a Benedictine abbot by the name of Suger had just completed his plan to rebuild the Basilica of Saint-Denis in a new style through which he believed the dull mind rises to truth through that which is material. This refers to one architectural feature in particular, high, rib-vault ceilings which created much more space inside the cathedral and were designed to draw the attention of people up towards heaven. This design feature also allowed whole walls of the cathedral to be transformed by colourful stained glass. Work started on Wells Cathedral soon afterwards, greatly inspired by Abbot Suger's work. Planned in the crucifix style with the head pointing east and foot pointing west, the cathedral is 126 metres long and the nave is 20 metres high. This is quite low compared to some of the bigger cathedrals elsewhere. 
Use of tracery, lancet windows and mullions are all characteristic of English Gothic architecture. Whilst examples of all three of these architectural elements can be found at Wells, the lancet windows have no tracery at all, which was more common in early English Gothic architecture before advances were made in the use of mullions and tracery with glass. Lancet windows are tall, thin windows with a pointed arch at the top and are so named because they resemble the weapon often carried by a soldier called a lance. Examples of these lancet windows can be seen on the west front of the cathedral, which is the most celebrated for its life-size sculptures and delicate floral carvings. Inside the pinnacle-topped gable is a sculpture of Christ the Judge. Immediately below him, sculptures of the Twelve Apostles peer out over the small city of Wells. Below the Apostles are nine archangels, which are half-size sculptures. At one time, all of these, along with the decorative carvings, would have been painted and gilded. However, today, all the paint has worn away and the sculptures are the colour of the oolite sedimentary stone used to construct the cathedral. It is remarkable to think that more than 800 years ago, such magnificent buildings were created without the use of large cranes and modern technology. It would have taken much longer, but it is possible to see the high level of craftsmanship and attention to detail that is less common in the modern day. That is the end of section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers.